Hello and welcome, Paul here. And I am playing Star Wars Galaxies, and this is my Empire in Flame series. Now in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about guilds and how you can create one. And the first thing you need to do is acquire a guild hall. Now you can do that by purchasing one from a master architect or someone who just happens to have a deed maybe they traded for it or maybe they stole it from someone's house when they had admin rights who knows there's many different ways you can acquire one but let's say you just went and bought it so you can even buy it from one or you can craft it if you're a master architect and that's what we're going to do now in order to create a guild you do need a guild hall so and keep in mind that guild halls are like houses they must be placed within city limits at least on the empire in flames server but before we do that i want to talk about the different guild halls that are available there's a few different styles and if you remember in the last video i showed you one of the planet guild halls that were available and I believe that one was a generic planet guild hall now you can kind of see it here in the hollow deed which is oh this feature so so good but there are a few different ones there's a Corellium one a generic planet guild hall and a Naboo guild hall and a Tatooine guild hall now I want to point out that some of these the only difference is on them are the banners outside and the textures on the exterior. The generic planet guild hall can be placed on every planet. But uh, yeah, we are going with the Tatooine guild hall. And there's a couple of things I want to talk about when it comes to this one in particular. Now I have had to collect quite a few resources. So when crafting certain items will require identical components as you can see there if you read the small text power supply requires two identical power core units from a factory crate so that means that you need to go and use the exact same materials and have the same serial numbers and the way you do that is you make a schematic and you dump that schematic into a factory dump the ingredients in there and it will churn out a factory crate filled with them now you can do schematics for pretty well everything hell I could make a schematic for a guild hall, but that would be a lot of resources we're whacking in there. Anyway, I have everything I need here. Now, as far as I'm aware, even though there's this whole, you know, experimental options when it comes for durability, I don't think it makes any difference when it comes to houses because houses are static. As long as you pay the maintenance, nothing changes. There's no change in the amount you have to pay on a weekly basis. There is no health point or condition change. Like none of it changes, none of it matters. So it really doesn't matter what quality materials you use when it comes to a house, at least for architect. When it comes for when it, when it comes down to other architect uh, uh, structures, deeds such as a harvester, then you want like top quality components and resources because you're going to be wanting to increase the storage you want to increase the extraction rate and that type of thing that's when it matters but in this case it doesn't so right now i do have quite a lot of lowish grade materials which we're going to be dumping in here we've got steel we have carbonate ore now if we go down here i've created a factory crate which contains 15 wool modules or wool sections here. Cool thing is I can click this and it will just automatically add them. Perfect, so I don't have to individually click. We've also got our power core units and our structure storage modules. There we go, that's all of our resources. Now we're going to assemble this. We can't go back. Here we go. 
can be built on Dantooine, Locke, Tanab, and Tatooine. Base maintenance, 100 credits per hour. Now, just for the sake, since the options here, even though it makes no difference, I'm going to quickly show you experimentation. Depending on what you're doing, I think you can have multiple ones of these with damage, speed, that type of thing. And I'm pretty sure I've shown you this in a previous video, but you can max out the points. And when this arrow is, you know, against the red, that's when you hit run experiments. Although I don't think it really matters. And the second time you do it, it never shows up. But running a P experiment, it never fails. But that really did nothing in this case, so... Now, I could create the manufacturing schematic if I wanted to put it in the factory, but that would be a bad mistake. So we're going to create a prototype item. And here we go, this is the screen I wanted. So I want to make this a bit bigger so we can see. And up here, there are going to be a few different options. So, first of all, this is the... Planetary Guildhall Tatooine style, which was added. Now this is the original Tatooine Guild Hall, which is a very nice building and one which will probably be making a, an appearance in my city at some point, but not just yet. And here are a couple of others. These are what the Marksman and Brawler Guild Halls look like on, I believe it's Moss Eisley or Hesper or Tatooine or Antha, as I list off every single major city. And here's another one, same interior, but it's got different things outside, different statues. Now, while it would have been neat to use some of the newer buildings, just because the design, you know, it's different, it's unique, the interior is actually really small. And to be honest, I kind of wanted... I, I wanted a guild or I wanted something that looked unique, that, well, I say unique, I wanted something that was kind of grand and very cool looking so after seeing this and the fact that it comes in Tatooine textures so it's gonna have that yellowish you know dusty stone walls rather than the you know slick white and clean uh, generic look I figured I'd go with this now this would this is more of like a I feel this fits guild halls a little better you know it's kind of cozy like and if you want to make it just a hangout for your guild, it would be excellent for that. But, I mean, we've got a city, we're going to have a cantina, we're going to have all sorts. So I kind of just wanted like a big area which can be used to showcase, you know, achievements. So my guild hall is going to be a bit of a, a meeting area. It's going to have, you know, our trophies hung up, you know, get some crate dragon heads, uh, crate dragon skulls and things like that. Should be pretty cool. Anyway, deed for Tatooine Guild Hall. And in case this ever gets redeeded and it can be renamed, I don't know if it can. I was wondering if I should give it a special name. But I think really I just want to... I'm not sure what the other one was called. I think it's Planetary... I'm going to call it Planetary Style. And let's just go ahead and create this object. Are we done with this? Yes. Done and done. And that is going to take 88 seconds in the old crafting tool here. But yeah, that's the guild hall. Now after that we will make our way towards Valley of Ashes. And I need a place to put this down, so soon as this gets churned out and into my inventory oh hopefully i've got enough room i noticed my inventory is being capping out a little bit and yeah holy crap this is not organized whatsoever but one thing i will point out this thing here tapestry tatooine draft schematic this was looted off a npc you can find these there's various different things that you can uh, craft it's actually a flag, I believe, of the Tatooine symbol, the Twin Suns. And this is actually created by a tailor, field where one basic gear is required, so... Yeah. We're going to have to go hunting for those and see what unique things we can make. 
18 seconds, come on, give me the guild hall. Give me the guild hall. If we look around here, we actually have a couple of, uh, a couple of other schematics here. We've got the cloning facility, we've got the Tatooine bank, and we've got the Tatooine shut uh, shuttle port. Shuttle port? God, I hope not. It's going to be quite unpleasant to land in. The shuttle port. And, uh, yeah, these were created by... Are they all created by the same person? Yes, all created by Destroy. So, we picked up those just to get them out of the way. I don't think I was quite Master Architect just yet, but... Uh, there we go. Deed for the Tatooine Guild Hall. Sweet. And hey ho, if I just drop it here. We can see it on the floor and it looks fabulous. It looks fabulous. I really do like this new hollow system. I think one thing I plan on doing in the City Hall is making a map of the town. It's going to require double the resources, so I'm going to have to make another one of these just to use in the map, including a new City Hall. But I think the effect will be well worth it, so that's something I'll be working on eventually. Anyway, let's get this placed. Okay, here I am in the lovely Imperial-controlled city of Bestine. And what I wanted to do is pull out my new swoop bike. This was crafted by guildmate Alec Don's, I believe. I, I forget I forget your surname, Don. Pretty pretty sure it was Don's, but uh, you're not gonna watch this video anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Here we go, I'm gonna generate my vehicle now. So yeah, this is the swoop bike, one of the fastest mounts in the game, or at least currently in the game. It's got a few resists, it's got adequate, you know, health pool. I don't want to use it, you know, when there's enemies nearby, but hey-ho. It's fast, it's sweet, it will get me from A to B relatively quickly, a lot faster than my flash speeder. So... That is good news. Anyway, I've got a long journey ahead of me. Shouldn't take too long, but let's make our way to Valley of Ashes. Okay, so we're here in Valley of Ashes behind the city hall. I'm gonna go ahead and place this guild hall down now I have my swoop bike pointing just so I got a rough idea on direction although I don't really need it since I have the town hall here actually but it is kind of useful just to line up the middle so it's kind of off center I gotta remember that so we actually want to set it up just back here leave a bit of room for a garden although I can remove this guild hall if necessary so let's go ahead and do it So yeah, you can't see it, but like if I move any further this way, we start clipping into the. So yeah, that is that is it. I just need to go forward. Maybe bring it back up to here. I don't know how much room I need to leave, but I'm gonna just go to about there for now. There should be plenty of room. Come on, there we go. There we go, oh perfect, it lines up perfectly. Okay, it is off the ground a little bit, but I think that was to be expected anyway, just because of, you know, terrain and whatnot. Now that we have our player association, can these two not get in? No, they can't get in yet. Too bad. 
but let's go ahead. So this is our new guild hall. Now we want to go into one of these rooms on the side where all the player controls are. And it's like, no, admin. Where's the guild terminal? Structure management. It's actually on the opposite side. A little bit confused here. So yeah, I think I'm going to use this as a trophy room for the, uh, the guild. So we go around to this side. Here we go, this is the terminal we want. So we want to go ahead and create a guild. Enter a name for your guild. Guild names must be between 1 and 25 characters in length. Okay. Here we go. I'm going with the Ashen Order to fit in line with some of the previous guilds I've done in the past. Hit OK. I'm glad that actually took it. I wasn't sure if it would take uh, Ashen just because of the AS in the name because the profanity filter in Star Wars Galaxy is, is a little overzealous. And for the guild abbreviation, I'm going to go with Ashes. You can have it uppercase, lowercase. It must be between one and five characters. We could have just had A if we wanted to. I believe we could use dashes as well. We could have done that. But I find that a lot of people go with uppercase for guild tags. And to be honest, it stands out and looks pretty sharp in this particular game. So that's what I'm going to go with. There we go. Did it create this? Yes, there we go. Ashes. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay. Guild enemies. Oh, yes. So I'll go for these in a moment. Let me just have a quick look. So to invite someone to the guild, I think I have to sponsor them first. Let me have a look. G invites. So I have to sponsor someone if they want to join the guild. Could not be found nearby. Do I have to? Oh, okay. That's right. You have to make sure they have to be in the guild hall itself, I believe. So unless I'm just messing this up, but the guild hall is actually set to private when you first get it just gonna go ahead and whack in some cash there we go and it's known as a player association in this game but uh privacy the structure is now public those two to follow me and I should be able to invite them now so let me try that once more just once just so you guys are all aware on how this works guild leader elections that is new I don't recall ever ever seeing that but hey ho there we go accepted and I believe I can go to guild members now. No. Oh, sponsored for membership. Jalib, we can hit OK there. And I can accept or decline. So I guess this is a way you can kind of see if a person, you know, if they, you know, are a good fit for your guild. If you want to do a trial period, uh, sponsor for membership. One more. I'll get a guild ma I'll get a, a mail every time this goes through. There we go. So just to check that worked. Wherever he's gone. There he is. Yes, ashes. So it worked. It worked. So if I wanted to, I could remove the guild.
hall, but I won't have access to the... to this. I can actually change the guild name, I did not know this. Takes approximately seven days to take effect. I can transfer the uh, player association leadership. I can check all the guild members here. What other options do we get? I can disband the guild. I can look at the guild information. We have three members. Tells me the leader, tells me the name, tells me the tag. We can look at the guild enemies. So the way this works. So basically, you can declare war upon another guild and they can declare it back, you know, back to you or, or essentially accept the declaration of war. And what this means is that both guilds would enter into a guild war and it would make all members attackable to each other. So Ashes would be attackable to, you know, Guild A if they declared war on us and we declared war back. So basically this would allow you to PvP between two guilds, even if they're on the same faction, and there'd be no safe zones. That would just be it, you would be at war. The only safe zones would be your houses, which are set to private. I believe you if you go into combat in certain buildings you get kicked out, such as the cantinas and whatnot. Uh at least the city cantinas. So yeah, that's how that would work. You would basically be kill on site to whatever guild you are fighting. In the past, I know some guilds have like gone to war, attacked a bunch of people that had you know previously declared war and then made peace just so they wouldn't get killed in retaliation. But uh, yeah, anyway, I could enable guild leader elections. I've never really seen this option, so that is new to me, but uh, yeah, this was just a quick look at how guild, guilds work, how guild, uh, guild management works, and the creation of the Ashen Order, which is a imperial aligned guild on Empire in Flames on Starsider. So, so yeah, I'll have some more information in the coming videos on how to join if you're interested. We're probably going to be fairly open. But uh, right now I just want to at least get the city sorted out a bit more before I start accepting people in. So expect more news on that soon. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope this has been helpful. Until next time.